Hey there guys, and welcome to the first episode of a new series I will be starting, where we shall be let's playing Morrowind, one of the older Elder Scrolls titles. So um, before we start this, I just wanted to say real quick that um, I'm not very familiar with this game as I am with Oblivion and Skyrim, the next two games in the series, mm -hmm. but um, you know, I still wanted to play it anyway because it's fun and cool. And I eventually, hopefully, maybe we'll play all of the games, but for now, I figured to start with the third one, you know, the, the one before the other two. So yeah, right. Let's get started. There we go. taken you from the Imperial City's prison, first by carriage and now by boat, to the east, to Morrowind. Fear not, for I am watchful. You have been chosen. Wake up. We're here. Why are you shaking? Are you okay? Wake up. Hello. What's your name? You're, you're quite... Okay. All right. So let's see here. I am. Um, I'm terrible at naming myself in all these RPGs. So I just found a random name generator online, and I came up with. What? Wait. There we go. Yes. Okay. Vilvani dress. Not even there last night's storm could wake you. I heard them say we reached Morrowind. Yay! Let us go. Oh, so we're we're prisoners? Well, that's a well. Oh, that comes the guard. Hello. This is where you get off. Come with me. Your face looks kind of weird, sir. Right, tutorials. Yay for moving. How exciting. One thing I've always loved about this game is the soundtrack is absolutely fantastic in my opinion. I haven't heard... Get yourself up on deck and let's keep this as civil as possible. Well, excuse you. Okay. Uh, spacebar. Alright. Anyway, this, I always found the soundtrack of this game to be absolutely fantastic. I'd love it to this death. This is where they want you. Head down to the dock and I'll show you to the census office. Okay. Hello. I assume you'll show me where they're... You finally arrived. Our records don't show from where. Right, character creation. Okay. First off, let me move this to... There we go. Uh, yes, mail. Um, I figured since this game is set in Morrowind, the home of the Dark Elves, I figured it was only appropriate to be raced as such. You know, stick with the local culture and all that. Uh, Dark Elf? Yes, okay. Great. I'm sure you'll fit right in. Oh, I'll thanks. Up to the office and they'll finish your release. This is it's, it's worth noting. This is like one of the few sections of the game that is actually fully voiced. The intro here, everything after this is usually just voiced or greetings, and everything else is in text dialogue. So this is pretty rare for the game, actually. Hello. Uh, yes, we've been expecting you. Uh, you'll have to be recorded before you're officially released. There are a few ways we can do this, and the choice is yours. Okay, so this is basically how we create our class and our role and all that that we'll be going through throughout the game. I'm going to go ahead and create a custom class here, just so I can be more suspic uh, uh, specific about what... Um, we will be doing. So for this for this gameplay I was wanting to do a combination of stealth and magic, which tend to be my favorite well, just you know, roles for RPGs. So as far as class name, let's just go with Outlander because everyone in this game has a hard on for calling you that. 
So here we're also going to do our specialization will be stealth. Our favorite attributes will be uh ooh spears. Uh, let's go with speed and intelligence. That should cover right. Okay. Major skills we want destruction. Uh light armor, light armor. Uh, mysticism, mysticism, ism, mi where, sir, there you are. Uh, illusion, wait, do we want illusion? I'm not sure if we want to, alright, um, we're going to go, actually, we're going to do short blade, and marksmanship. There we are, okay, that will be our major skills. How the classes work in this game is you have five major skills and then five minor. I believe the major skills get a plus ten bonus from when you start, and the minors get a plus five. So that's the main difference between the two. But um, because I want, for what I want to be doing for this, I've focused on some of the more magical things, well, the destruction, mysticism, and our attacking for our major skills so we can just get a nice buff there right at the start. And for our minor skills we're going to be doing the more some of the more stealthy things. Sneak, security, uh, let's see here, illusion, um, alteration, and finally mercan mercantile? Mercantile. I don't think it's mercantile. That just doesn't sound right. I think that was fireworks there in the background. I wonder if you could hear that. Alright, okay, mercantile. Perfect. Awesome. Very good. The letter that preceded, you mentioned you were born under a certain sign. And what would that be? Because that matters, apparently. Uh, the sign basically just gives you a nice little buff to something. Uh, that all the all of these have different abilities and stat buffs. I'm going to be going with the Thief, which gives us Akaviri Danger Sense and Sanctuary for 10 points, which I will explain later. Interesting. But, um... Now, before I stamp these papers, make sure this information is correct. Wonderful. So, Vonadra, Dark Thief... See, because because we chose these major skills, we have uh, 45 Short Blade, 40 Destruction, 40 Light Armor, 40 Marksman, and 35 Mysticism right off the bat, which is absolutely fantastic. The skill cap in this game is... Uh, 100. So we are already well on our way with these skills and uh, getting them to max rank. Very exciting. And then as you can see down here we have our illusion, stealth, and all this stuff down here. As, as to, Just to quickly explain, the, imagine, the magical perks that I've chosen, illusion, alteration, and mysticism, their main goals are going to be assisting me in all of my various thievery habits. Um, illusion for stealth potions, alteration for opening locks, and mysticism for telekinesis and the stuff and the like. So, yeah, this is oh, and there's destruction because it's cool to kill things with fireballs, because fireballs are fun. Awesome. Now, okay, and right-clicking allows you to use your menus. Show your and papers right. to the captain when you exit to get your release fee. Okay, so we need to read the papers by. Really? Yeah, okay, cool. Take. All the menus, right object, click, button. Okay. Awesome. Continue yeah. through to the next building and talk to Celis Gravius. Okay. So as that helpful tooltip mentioned, if we right click here, we have access to our um, our stats screen and our inventory. Right now we don't really have a lot in our inventory because we just got here and our stats uh, aren't very showy at the current moment, but you know, this will obviously increase as we increase in stats. Uh, right. So, first things first. There's no one in this room. And we are thieves. So, uh, let's just start... Oh. That, okay, yes. Uh, here's our first little weapon here. And then you can... It's saying how... To equip things in this game, you left-click them here, and then you right-click... Uh, left-click them again on your character. And as this is saying, if you... Have what it, this includes lock picks, weapons, armor, etc. When you hit F with your, um, when you're just out in the world, you draw your weapon or lock pick or probe for use. Um, here's a little note. I forgot my Lovely. I'm just gonna take this. 
it's mine now. Alright, so we are a thief, and there is no one around, so I'm just going to nab everything that isn't... Um, equip lights and torches. Lights and torches for... Okay, cool. Uh, just nab everything here that isn't nailed down, because money. I'm going to take all of these bottles, just, just take goblets, whatever that was, take all of it. And then, oh, take the book too, why not? Uh, awesome. Alright, so as you see here, we have a locked chest. Now in Skyrim and Oblivion, this was, um, this clicking on a chest entered a minigame where you would do a lock, quick lock, lock picking minigame and you would hopefully pick the lock if you're good. In this game, it's more of an RPG. It's more of like a dice roll thing than anything else. When you click on it, it gives you, there's a, you have to equip the lock pick as if it were a weapon. And then, oh yeah, and by dice roll decides whether or not you open the chest. So we got our second try there. Also, lock picks eventually break over time as opposed to when you fail which I almost prefer, honestly, because this way you get a lot more use out of your lockpicks than you do in the future games, just because it's very easy to break lockpicks. Yeah. So we're going to go in here, too, and just take literally everything that isn't nailed down, because we, <laughs> we kind of need money, because we're poor. So... Alright, I believe that's everything for that room. Just close that door there. We were never- we were never- What are you talking- I- I- I was never- No, of course not. I- I went right out the door like I was supposed to. Yeah. And- yay! Okay. And now we also have a map. Wait, in the corner there, which, as the thing was telling us, shows us which direction is north and west and the like. And um, all the little yellow boxes indicate rooms or places we can enter. And we also have the world map now. So um, this, this will be the giant mass of land we will get to explore in our journey here. We also have the local map for all the different buildings. And uh, if we check this barrel here, we actually have this engraved ring of healing, which we will need for just a moment. Oh, and we do that, we also get a magic menu down here in the corner. This includes all of our powers and uh, spell effects that we gain throughout the game. So um, powers are usually based off your race. Because we are a dark elf, we get an Ancestor Guardian, which um, summons the Sanctuary spell for 50 points for 60 seconds. Uh, sanctu and, oh, also, it was worth noting, powers can only be used once, today, once a day, I believe. So you have to use them sparingly. Uh, Sanctuary basically provides a shield or guard against physical attacks. So, because w if we apply the Sanctuary, 50 points, uh, I believe it's 50 points of damage, will be negated. So the enemy will have to break through 50 points of additional health, basically, before they can start actually hurting us. Very helpful. Because we specialize in mysticism, we have Detect Creature, which allows us to detect animals from 50 to 150 feet for 5 seconds which is very useful for exploring, so you can see enemies, especially in dungeons, you can see enemies before they show up. And Firebite, for, because of destruction, we have Firebite, which is just a touch fire spell, very basic. And also it has down here all of our magical items, and because we just picked up that ring, it has it listed here. Up here we have our active effects. So we because we are a thief, we have Akaviri Danger Sense for 10 points, which is basically a constant 10 points of Sanctuary, if I understand that right. Very helpful. And our because we're Dark Elves, we naturally get Resist Fire 75%, which is nice because this entire island is actually on a volcano. So <laughs> fire, fire resistance is helpful. Press Spike, Spire, and talk to the captain. Okay. So this is the first time we actually have a normal conversation window. Um, so basically how this game works as opposed to Oblivion and Skyrim where the characters would voice dialogue and you have options on the side. This game is more of a conversation tree where you have all your different dialogue topics to the side as normal. You can also click on them in the conversation and he'll just sort of list them out here 
it's not basically it's just not voice acted which I almost prefer because I'm a fast reader uh, for the majority of this I'm probably not gonna read anything out loud unless it's hyper important because a lot of this is just flavor text to add to the story so <laughs> you see here he's just basically just saying we're free because the Emperor said so but at the same time we also have duties to do so he says this package came with the news of your arrival you're to take it to Caius Casadus, I guess, in the town of Balmora. Go to the South Wall Corner Club and ask for Caius. They'll know where to find him. Serve him as you would serve the Emperor himself. I also have a letter for you and a dispersal to your name. So then if we click on Caius, we'll... Oh, he basically just spits the same thing out at us. If we click on Balmora, he gives us basically directions to Balmora. It's north of the current town, and... Uh, basically just pass all these places and he also tells us about these things called silt striders now in oblivion and skyrim you had fast travel which was incredibly handy because if you ever went to a place you could just fast travel back to it from the overworld map if you were out in the open which was extremely handy in this game they don't have that instead they have a bunch of different things they have uh, teleportation from the mages guild um, a, a spell called album city in intervention which I'll, I'll get into later, uh, mark and recall spells, and these things called silt striders. If you played Skyrim, you probably know about the little horse carriages that take you to all the different towns. Silt striders are basically the same thing, but the giant bug Marwyn version. They're, they're really cool looking, actually. I, I think they're awesome. And if you pay money to them, you can travel to all the different major towns of the game. So yeah, that's basically all we need to know from him. We can also, from pretty much all characters, you can ask for their background and they'll just tell you what their name is and their class. Uh, you can ask them about their trade and they'll pretty much say the same thing, often include a little bit more detail. Um, attach to the census, exercise, and you can click <laughs> Imperial is obviously the race of the guy, um, you know, basically just the standard humans. But anyway, enough talking to that guy. This is exit. Press J. Uh. <laughs> Fun fact, you're on your own now. Good luck. They're actually not kidding about that. From this point on, you can basically do whatever the heck you want. Um, they, The guy I told you about go seeing the Caius Casadus guy, but if you don't want to, you really don't have to. So, uh, yeah, now we're out in the open. So first thing we're actually going to do is talk to this guy, Fargoth, and he starts complaining how the Imperials stole his ring when he got off the boat. If you click on ring, he talks about it as his fairly Aram. If you will remember, we just picked up a ring from the barrel, and <laughs> we can't actually say, uh, no, I, I, I don't know about a ring, but I'm going to go ahead and give him his ring. And he's super happy. His uh, disposition, this is the disposition bar, by the way, how much people like us, shoots up to 90. And he says he'll put it in a word with Ariel, the local trader, which is very useful, because here in the moment, we're going to be selling a ton of our, well, you know, let's go ahead and go do that now. So, yeah, by the way, this is Sedanin, the first little town that you start out in. It's, it's, it's pretty small, but it's a, it's a charming little village, you know? It's got, it's got lovely people. Hello, ma'am. Right, so we're just gonna head on here. This is the tra local trade house. Hello, sir. And, uh, Barger. Okay, so we are going to sell you... Just take all, just buy everything, please. I frankly bet bread, to court roots, uh, not not the package to the guy. That would, that would be slightly unfortunate. Accidentally sold our one mission that we currently have. I'm, I don't think I'm going to immediately head to Caius. You can if you want to, but first I want to sort of mess around here and do it run through a dungeon or two, I believe, in Sedanin, just to get some basic experience and show off combat and the like. So, let's see, no, what else can I sell? Scrib Jerky? Sure, sell the Scrib Jerky. I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna sell all these alchemy materials, because frankly I'm not that interested in alchemy. Okay, so another thing, we have the Mercantile skill. Basically, Mercantile, whatever, I don't, I don't really care. What this does is it allows us to barter how much gold we're gonna get. The higher your mercantile skill, the more you can barter, and the less likely he's going to get pissed. So I believe the original value is 211. So I'm going to try and get it for 230. Oh, no? Okay. 225? Sweetness! Awesome! So because he liked us so much, and because of our mercantile skill, we was actually able to get a better deal. 
than we were if we weren't, if we didn't have an increased mercantile skill. So now that we have this all, all of our monies, I'm actually going to look here and see. Father's hand, restoration, restoration, distraction. There. Uh, I'm going to buy a... Ooh, 15 to 30, 2 to 20. For one sec. Oh, this is on touch. That's why. Okay. I'm going to buy a fireball. Because we do not currently own a ranged destruction attack. And now we do. So, now when I equip this... As, as you can see, the little icon changed in the lower right. Um, if I hit R button, I hold up my hands in this threatening manner. And if I were to left click, I would throw a fireball. So, <laughs> hooray for science. Okay. So now, what I believe we're going to do here, let's re-equip our iron dagger. We currently do not own anything of awesome. So... <laughs> We're going to go... I suppose it is my uh, duty to help those less fortunate than myself. Lovely. Uh, what we're actually going to go do is there is a little cave right outside of town here. Just right this way. There is... I believe you can see it now. We are going to go and show off some combat and get some murder experience under our belt. <laughs> also, I do not currently have any marksman related things or frankly a half decent short blade so and armor so <laughs> I kind of want to kill some things so we can get all that stuff ready so I'm actually gonna save I, I just just so you guys know I am a here what should I call this what's my Vilvani Vilvani fantastic I am a compulsive saver I save a lot <laughs> so I'm sorry if I if I if that starts to annoy you guys I'm just not a fan of dying and having bad things happen. Alright, so normally this person would probably see me, but I am holding control, which puts the little um, bag and hand symbol in the lower left corner. That signifies that you're sneaking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast a fireball. Oops. That didn't work out how I wanted it to. Okay. Fireball. That did very little. Okay. Sword. Roar. You are dead now. Okay, another thing I should probably mention, this game, attacking, as opposed to Skyrim Oblivion, if you hit, you hit. There's there's nothing else to it, frankly. Um, in this game, 4, 5, 4, 5, 4, 5, 5, 5, right, I'm going to keep what I currently have. Uh, new armor. Let's just, let's just change, why not? Uh, anyway, in this game, all attacks are based on a sort of D Dungeons & Dragons dice roll. So, as opposed, if in... You know, as opposed to just you know making contact, you have there are a variety of factors that contribute to you actually hitting the enemy, including your current uh, fatigue. That's the little green bar in the corner. Your ability skill, your level compared to the enemy, their armor, all that stuff. It all contributes to your ability to um, hit. Because oh my, oh hello, we're gonna just burn you. Would you kindly burn, sir? Sir? Right, I'm gonna pull out my <laughs> now. See, as you so see, sometimes I'm hitting him, but it's just not doing anything. Oh, jeez, please stop. Ooh. He, uh, <laughs> that fireball hit us for a lot of damage there. That was frightening. Okay. Let me see here. Do I have... I think Flynn... Does Flynn heal you? Oh, I just applied an effect. Fortify attributes. No, it doesn't heal. Okay. Um. That's cool. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna head back up here. I probably shouldn't have sold all my food. I imagine if I had. Oh, cool! I have a, I have the key. I imagine if I kept my um my food, I probably would be able to heal. I don't know if I have a healing spell. Hello, sir. Uh oh, will you let me go free? Sure. You're you're welcome, friend. Here, I'll I'll free all of you guys. Slavery is bad. Slavery ain't cool. Yes, um, the the native people of Morrowinds, the Dark Elves, are kind of racist. All the be the beast races, the Khajiit here, the cat guys, and the Argonians, the lizard people, they they don't like them very much. They're slaves. So, that, there's that. Um, I'm gonna take. Does this heal? I somehow doubt that. What? I'm gonna take that as a no. 
Well, that was useless. Okay, um, I'm gonna <laughs> back to the compulsive proof of the compulsive saving. I'm just gonna save again because if I die, I'm gonna be very, very sad. That would just put a dampener on my day. Uh, stealth mode. Is there anyone back here? Feel it? Yep. Hello. Uh, how how do I want to do this? Sneak 20. I kind of doubt I'll be able to walk up behind her. Yep. Okay. And oh, she has she has throwy. Okay, run up and stab you. Oh, another thing is worth noting in. Oblivion in Skyrim, when you just attacked, it just did a variety of animations. In this game, depending on how you're moving, it actually changes your attack. So if you're just standing still, you attack, you do a chop. If you're moving side to side, you do a slash. And if you're doing um, forward or back, you do a stab. And as you check your weapons, you'll see chop slash thrust. Those indicate how much damage you're going to potentially do by doing those things. So, obviously, thrusting is the best for our dagger. So... I should thrust more often. And let's see. Oh, pro oh, another okay. Another thing I'm gonna mention. Probes are sort of like lockpicks, but they have a different purpose. In this game, it's possible for chests to be magically trapped, which ooh, ooh. oh, it's long blade. Okay, I'm gonna take that anyway. Iron saber, and sell that because that's that that's quite nifty. Uh, moon sugar. Okay, yay for. Uh, moon sugar is basically this game's version of drugs. So, uh, mer merchants, most merchants at least, won't deal business with you if you have moon sugar or the liquid equivalent skooma in your inventory. But there are a few who will pay a very high price for it, I believe. So, uh, yeah, skooma right there. <laughs> 500, 500 drakes. You can become a drug dealer! Because what else do you really want to do with your life? Anyway, so what was I saying about the, the before the dagger thing? I don't. Oh, yes, throwing weapons. Um, in this game, uh, in future, I guess, Elder Scrolls games, your marksman skills are usually just set to bow and arrow. In this game, they actually have like throwing stars and dag throwing daggers, which is really cool. So now we have these little throwing star things that we can throw. Because, I mean, why would you not want a throwing star, frankly? So, soul trap. Ooh, I kind of like this chest. Chitin Curious, pretty soul gem, gold. I'll take all of this. So, let's see. Uh, iron dagger, okay. Back to Chitin Curious. Perfect! I am very happy. I was hoping I could get some armor besides those boots I picked up earlier. Oh, and Greaves, yes! Let's see what we have here. Soul trap and open. <gasps> open. Okay, so open spells. Um, to pick locks, you need another slave key, fancy. You need a certain security skill and a certain level lockpick. Sometimes the lockpicks just won't, basically just won't work, and that's what open spells are for. They have set values from which you can open certain chests. So I believe uh, 40 open 40 to 60 points on touch. So if there's a lock that we come across with 40 to 60 points, we'll be able to open that with that spell. So that's that's very nice. Um, let's see here. Where are those pant pants? Hello, pants. Yes. Now we have pants. Well, we had pants before, but now we have useful pants. All right. So anyway, um, it has been about 30 minutes. So I believe I'm going to stop this one here. Next time I see you guys, I'm going to be back in town. I'm going to sell some of my old stuff and hopefully get some healing, heal myself because I'm almost dead. So I thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.